Um, this is some more stuff from KA injection. Um, these are just ARP rod bolts. Um, the original set were not ARP and those are ARP, so. So why not upgrade while it's apart? The other thing I got are these little guys and all they are, these are just uh, little piston oil, oil squirter delete spacers, whatever you want to call them. So these are the original oil squirters. Um, yeah, so my first idea was just to cut the little spout off and then weld it shut and just use these as, uh, just reinstall these. Um, the problem is, is that it's really difficult to weld metal that's been soaked in oil and heat cycled. Um, I mean, when you look at metal, you think of it as a solid, um, you know, a solid thing, you know, but, uh, but in actuality at a microscopic level, um, it's like a sponge, you know, it's very porous. So I, I guess it really depends on the grade of metal. You know, if these were stainless, it probably wouldn't be an issue, but, um, you know, these look like they're probably cast as something. They're not, um, not the highest grade of anything. So, so I didn't have very good luck trying to weld these. Um, I did have very good luck in smoking out the machine shop trying to weld them though. Um, I mean, it looks fine. It looks like it's, it would probably hold, but you know, I just, I'm just not willing to risk putting this inside the engine to have it fail. You know, to say this well decides, you know, once it sees 90 PSI of oil or 70 PSI or whatever, that it just decides to blow that weld right out. Cause it, it, it looks fine now that it's grinded it down, but it really looked shady before, you know, it looked, it looked real bad. So went ahead and ordered these 30 bucks. Um, just use a stock bolt and new washers and uh, these bolt into the location where the oil squirters would go. If you're wondering why you would want to delete the oil squirters, um, one reason would be for more oil pressure. Um, another reason would be for cooler oil. Um, uh, reasons why you wouldn't want to delete them uh, is if you're running stock pistons and boost. Because um, what the squirters actually do, they're not really to lubricate the pistons or the pin or anything. They're there to cool the pistons. Um, and if you're running some nice forged pistons, that cooling isn't nearly as crucial. So, got those, got the bolts. make sure they're clean. Let's probably make sure I don't use my grubby bare hands. So yeah, previously, uh, previously plastic gauged the main journal, so I'm not gonna do that again. Or you know what those cl clearances are. I will have to do the rods because I haven't plastic gauged them. I think my rod clearance is going to be about um, two thou using a um, bore gauge. That's what I got. It seems a little wide, but. Not as wide as uh, the previous build.
just want to take a just gonna gently swab these down. I don't want to leave any uh, traces of towel behind. Not use too much lube. So I'm just gonna go nuts with it this time around. Alright, not. I don't want to forget these guys. Whoops. I didn't realize I moved it that much. Oh, that feels uh, pretty nice and smooth. No tight spots. So there's that. Next up, uh, rods and pistons. All right, so um, went ahead, checked out all the rods, checked the big end, make sure they're round. Um, they're not actually perfectly round, um, that's by design. Uh, there's going to be a little more clearance on the, uh, where the two halves meet than there is going to be from top to bottom. Alright, so I've got one rod and piston done. On to the next. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and install one of these uh, clips. I'm just going to install one of these clips into one side of the piston. into the little groove there, pushed it too far in. There we go. So yeah, one pin in, flip it around, make sure you have your notch, your little indent facing the right direction. Slide right in there. And this clip just goes in basically the same way. It'll actually be a little easier now that the pin's in there. Be a little bit harder since uh Fingers are all lubed up. There we go. Number one, number two. Next step is uh, get these guys inside the block.
All right, so the next step is I'm going to attempt to plasti gauge the rods. Decided I'm just going to do one rod at a time. You know, I'm not going to put them all together and then break it down. And I feel like it'll just be easier to keep track of everything if I try and be a little more meticulous about it. So it's somewhere between uh, 1.5 or 15 thou and 20 thou. So that's what I measured with my bore gauge. So I'm gonna say that's pretty good. I don't know if I'm gonna really bother doing the other ones because um, all the other ones came out. I mean, the, the math came out already, uh, came out. The math I did earlier comes out right, so. Thanks. That sounds good. Tiny little itty bitty little piece of plastic gauge. So if you're wondering why I'm putting the plastic gauge on the bottom instead of the uh, cap, it's because when I have to remove the cap, I have to tap on the bolts to um, get the cap and rod to separate. And if it's on the cap side, when I'm tapping on those bolts, it could compress the plastic gauge further than it should be compressed. That's why it's going on the bottom. This one looks like it got smushed a little weird. I can go ahead and check what's on the crank. It should be the same. I'm gonna redo this one because it's like severely tapered. There we go. That looks a lot better. All right, so now I can uh, clean all this crud up and lube it up and put it together.
Cool beans. So, with that done, yikes. So yeah, with that done, um, I know I said before I was just gonna do the whole engine all at once, get it together, do it all in one day. Um, nah, it's not, that's not gonna happen. Um, so, with that done, um, I've gotta wait on some gaskets. Gotta wait on, uh, I decided I'm gonna go with a uh, OEM front main seal. Cause just, you know, I just figured, you know, since I'm doing this again, I might as well go ahead and um, take care of some of the things that kind of bothered me the first time I put this together. And that was the fact that, you know, I went with a cheap gasket set. And granted, I didn't have any problems in the few hundred miles I did run it. About a thousand miles, whatever, I did run it and have any leaks from the front or main seal. Um, uh, I just want to eliminate that as a possibility of something going wrong. So, got to order some OEM Mazda seals. Um, so I've got to prep the head, got to paint the head gasket. I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, that copper crud on it since I'm reusing the head gasket. I mean, it's a Kometic, you know, so it's a hundred and something dollar head gasket. So not buying another one. I'm going to reuse it. Um, other than that, um, I don't know. Like I said, I'll just work on this as I feel like it.